Hi, my name is Michael Fluitt. I am the technical support engineer for Fusion Reactor. But I'm just going to very quickly show you a few things you may want to do with your Docker images. So Charlie did briefly touch on these, um, and it's about how to configure your instance. So there's a few things you may want to automatically uh, configure in Fusion Reactor before you run the images. It just makes it easier down the line. So where I am now is I'm on the docs and I'm looking at the Fusion Reactor in Docker page. So you can see in the installation example, that's kind of what we've shown, but there is more you can do. A few things you want probably want to look at are licensing Fusion Reactor. We don't want to get to a point where you run your dockers, but you have to manually add licenses. It's just not convenient. And same with passwords. So what we're going to look at is we have this page for the system properties, which I think, yeah, I do. Okay. So this is all the publicly available system properties for Fusion Reactor. And you see these top two here. So we have a minus D FR admin password and a minus and a FR license. And you, sorry, you prefix these with minus D. So these will become minus D FR admin password, minus D FR license. So to make our lives easier, what we are gonna do is we're just gonna add these to one of our Docker images. So I'm gonna start with FR license. And then if I go to my IDE, all I need to do is basically preface these to the end of my Java args. So I can add here, minus D, FR license equals. And then if I take a license out of earlier, I can simply apply this key and that's gonna automatically license Fusion Reactor for me. And then I'm just gonna do the same for the uh, admin password. So this just makes it a bit more secure because you set your password before you start the server. So I'm gonna copy this and then again, go to my workspace, add a space and then add the arg. So I need to preface with minus D and then I can just make that equal to whatever you want. Obviously the ideal way to do this would actually be to pass in a environment property. Um, in our case, we're not gonna bother. So I'm just gonna type it in, but you can make this as complicated as you want. You could, for example, extract the Java args to a run script in Docker. So you could have a run.sh file you add, and that could have all the environment variables for uh, license key, app name, whatever you wanted. Um, so the, but these two args here are basically gonna automatically license and configure the password for Fusion Reactor for you. Now, one more thing we want, you may want to do is if you've had Fusion Reactor for a while, you've no doubt changed some settings. Um, so what, and in Fusion Reactor, all these settings go to a single file called the reactor.com file. So this file is something that every instance has, but it's safe to copy between instances. So if you have one instance configured the way you like it, the way that works for you, you can just take this file and move it anywhere you need. So in my IDE, you'll see here I have one that I've placed in earlier. And this file doesn't do much. It changes my request history. It turns on some logging and it changes some sub transaction storage. It doesn't do a lot. Yours could be a lot bigger, but you can pass these into your containers. So every instance you configure has the same settings, the same configuration. And to do that, all I need to do is use the add command in my Docker file. So if I go to my Docker file, uh, the first thing I'll need to do is create a directory for the config. And all I need to do is append the mkdir command with conf. So I create that directory as well as the instance. And then where I have add currently, I'm just gonna copy this path as well. I add another add command and then my file and the location. So by just doing this, what I've done is pass my configuration into my instance. So these things don't take long to set up and there's things you should do. We can confirm it's running of course without these, but you should really look at doing these when you start uh, running in a kind of more finalized manner. And these two things, I've personally guided through a lot of people, a lot of people to do this with support and it just makes things easier. Um, for everyone. Okay, so these are the two things. And of course, if you want to look at the examples of these, 
they're both on the docks as well as some extra steps like persisting logging outside of the containers and things like this so you can look at these at a later date. Mm -hmm.